How the Internet Travels Across Oceans 98% of all international internet traffic flows via a huge network of undersea cables. This infrastructure travels across seas and oceans all over the globe to bridge countries such as China and the United States, Portugal and India, or South Africa and Malaysia. Underwater cables are the invisible force driving the advanced internet, with various and current years being financed by internet giants such as Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. They transmit almost all other communications, and yet, in a world of wireless networking and smartphones, we hardly know that they exist. Join us today as we plunge the depths and ask how the internet crosses oceans. According to the authoritative Submarine Cable Map website, there are recently 493 active or actively under construction subsea internet cables crisscrossing the globe. Transatlantic cables started to be instated more than 150 years ago for the telegraph network. At the end of the 20th century, the utilization of fiber optics brought about a real revolution in the application of this type of cable. Today, they affix distant continents along the ocean floor and are all around the globe, according to Bobis. In total, there are more than 420 underwater cables around the world, totaling about 1.3 million kilometers. Some interactive maps show all the undersea cables that are stationed around the world. One instance is the Submarine Cable Map, a website that gives data on when each cable started transmitting data, its length, and the companies that own it. There are more than 420 underwater cables around the globe, adding up to about 1.3 million kilometers. Although these cables are progressively utilizing more advanced technologies and are becoming more resistant, they do sometimes break. Most harm to undersea cables takes place because of human activities such as fishing and anchoring, according to Telegeography, a telecommunications market research and consultancy company. You might have heard that sharks are known to bite cables, but bites like this haven't accounted for a single cable fault since 2007, the company states. In recent years, many researchers have tried to employ these underwater cables to discern and anticipate earthquakes, but it is seismic movements themselves that are one of the nemesis of these cables. An immense earthquake in 2006 in southwest Taiwan damaged eight such cables, troubling several Asian countries. Mending undersea cables is expensive and time-taking. When they rupture, a telecommunications operator has to identify the location of the failure point, bring the flawed part to the surface, and reinstate it with a new length of cable. Deploying a cable is a year-long process that levies millions of dollars, state Seacom's Clatterbuck. The process starts by examining the naval charts to plot the best route. Cables are more secure in deep water, where they can lay on reasonably flat seabed and won't cause abrasion against rocks or be at risk of other disturbances. The deeper the better, Clatterbuck claimed. When you can lay the cable down in deep water, you rarely have any problems. It goes down to the bottom of the seabed and just stays there. Things become harder the nearer you get to shore. A cable that is only a few centimeters thick on the bottom of the ocean must be shielded from its environment as stretches to the landing station that connect it with the country's internet backbone. Imagine a long garden hose, inside of which are very small tubes that house a very, very thin fiber pair, Clatterbuck explained. That house is swathed in copper, which carries the direct current that powers the cable and its repeaters, sometimes up to 10,000 volts. The fibers are wrapped in urethane and wrapped in copper and wrapped again in urethane, he said. If we're going to have to put that cable on a shoreline that is very shallow and has a lot of rocks, you are now going to have to armor coat that cable so no one can hack through it. Cables in less conventional areas can be thicker than garden hoses, swathed in additional plastic, Kevlar armor plating, and stainless steel to verify they can't be ruptured. Depending on the coast, cable companies may also have to construct concrete trenches far out to sea to tuck the cable in to shield it from being pounded against rocks. Before the cable-deploying vessels go out, they transport another specialized ship, 
that maps the sea floor in the area they want to go, states Telegeography Strong. They want to avoid areas where there's a lot of undersea currents, certainly want to avoid volcanic areas, and avoid a lot of elevation change in the seafloor. Once the route is selected and examined, and the shore connections are protected, huge cable-deploying ships begin passing out the equipment. Imagine spools of spools of garden hose along with a lot of these repeaters the size of an old travel truck, Clatterbuck said. Sometimes it can take a month to load the cable onto a ship. The 6,600-kilometer 6 marble cable weighs over 4.6 million kilograms, or the equivalent of 34 blue whales, based on Microsoft's findings, which fund the project with Facebook. It takes more than two years to deploy the whole thing. Preventing breakdowns is vital for a robust and reliable connection virtually anywhere in the world. These cables are indispensable for transmitting immense amounts of data with very low latency. Today, having a reliable, resilient, high-capacity network is more important than ever, especially as we face a new digital normal with the COVID-19 crisis, claims Google Cloud. While undersea cables are a basic part, they are only one of the connectors in the internet ecosystem.